This is the Fire Maple Fortress, an ultralight titanium collapsible wood stove. I've been testing this for quite some time now, and I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Fire Maple for sending out their Fortress titanium ultralight collapsible wood stove so that I could share it with you. Like I mentioned, I've been testing this for a number of months, actually right out through the entire winter I've had it out. It's appeared in a number of videos and I've got a good amount of experience with it now and I think it's time that I gave you my thoughts on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse it, put it back in its carry case so that I can show you how it goes together and then of course we'll get a fire built in it and demonstrate it. All right, so I did collapse the stove, put it back in its case and that's as good a place to start as any. So the case itself is a nice Cordura type nylon. It is a nice brown color as well. It's up to the task. It's not bad at all. So it's closed with Velcro at the top. And the inside of the case is kind of rubberized. I'll be able to show you that once I get the components of the stove out. Uh, not that it needs to be waterproof, but what it does, it means just, you know, your stove's going to get dirty over time, and it just means it's a little easier to clean the inside. So I'm going to pull the components of the stove out, lay them to my side. They fit in a little snug. Sometimes it helps if I take them out a couple pieces at a time. There we go. That takes all the out. All except one or two that are a little stuck. And two crossbars. Now, uh, I just wanted to focus on the case for a second because there's, this is worth seeing. First off, there's the rubberized interior. Uh, you know, it's that actually is a, a nice feature as well. Here's the other thing. Instructions. Uh, if you're not familiar with the putting together this type of stove, the instructions may actually be of value. I'm like, well, I will be moving, taking this off. I just left it on to show you. Not that there's anything wrong with leaving it on. It's just I don't think it it's needs to be there. And I have enough experience with this now to know how to put it together. So let me put that down and grab the components of the stove. Okay, so this stove is very much like a lot of the stoves on the market today that are clones, copies, inspired by the original Emberlit stove. So uh, let's put that aside. This is different enough that it's not the Emberlit. It's actually considerably bigger than the Emberlit as well. But for anyone who is concerned about that, yes, it is a bit of a, at least inspired by the Emberlit, we'll say. It's pretty close in a lot of ways. And there are any number of brands out there that have similar designs. So what you get inside of the package are the four side pieces. And before I put them together, there's a few comments I need to make on. So those four side pieces, the fire grate, which is also your alcohol stove stand, which is also your solid fuel. As you can see, there's a depression in the center of it there. And two trivets or crossbars, whatever you want to call them, for the top. And I'll have comments on all of these components as we go. So here's the first thing I'm going to say before I even start to put it together. When I first uh, got this over, it first arrived to me in the mail. And I was excited to try it out. I, you know, I didn't expect it to be anything super special, super different from any of the other stoves on the market. But I wanted to see what kind of a twist or or interpretation Fire Maple did for the stove. And when I put it together, honestly, I wasn't all that impressed. And I, I'm guessing the reason why is because it was so loose. The components just didn't fit together tightly. That worried me a little bit. It, I wondered if it would fall apart while I was moving it around. Would it fall apart while it was in operation, which would be even worse, of course. So um, I put it together, and I had my first burn in the stove. And uh, let's just discuss this right now. I put the stove together. Now, normally when you put one of these stoves together, there is a way that seems correct. In other words, the way the metal is stamped and shaped, it seems to be the correct way. And, you know, usually your guide is, can you see fire maple? You want that on the outside. That's what the maker does. It wants you to sleep on the outside. So there are depressions in the metal where it's stamped. You can see that. That adds to structural rigidity for the stove, but it also gives you an indication which panels should go together in which direction. So I did it the way I normally would, which is pretty much the, the, the assembly that I'm going to show you in a minute. And I had my first fire in it. I was actually very concerned because but just about the time that first fire was finished, I could see the warping that was taking place. The sides were bowing out with the heat. Uh, titanium can do that. It's, and that's not necessarily an issue unless it, uh, per, it affects the performance and the function of the stove. 
Well, I was concerned, and the reason is, is before I even got a chance to disassemble the stove, the bottom plate fell out. It literally fell out with hot coals in it, and I was ready to write this stove off and complain to Fire Maple that it was a poor design, but then I gave it a second chance. Now, here's a couple of things I want to say. There's a reason why the components fit loosely, and you'll see that in a moment, but quick answer is, can you see how these are tapered a little bit towards the top? Well, and that there is two slots there and there. Well, the bottom slot obviously is for when you're burning wood in it with this plate, but if you want to use this plate for burning with alcohol or solid fuel, you have to move the plate up to the second slot. It has to be loose enough or have of the right dimensions for it to fit at that higher slot and still fit at the lower slot. And when it's tapered outwards towards the bottom, that means it's going to be looser in those slots. So that's the reason why it was a little loose when I first put it together. Now, here's the next thing I did. At the next test I did and ran the stove through another really hot fire, I just wanted to see what would happen if I made it a really hot fire for an extended period of time, I took the plates and reversed them so that everything that would have been inwards, the first burn, like the name Fire Maple, I turned outwards so that the, all the bowing was inwards on the, the fire, fire grate itself. You know what? It hasn't warped since. Uh, I don't know how, what to explain, but it hasn't moved a bit. It has been affected by the heat. So that very first hot burn that I put in it actually created a set in the titanium that it has kept ever since. Ah, what do I take from that? I'm going to give you a hint. If you're going to buy one of these and you're going to do it for yourself, if you want it so that fire maple is facing outwards each time you assemble it, then the first time you have a fire in it, turn everything inwards, fire maple and all the corresponding sides inwards, so that if it does warp outwards a little bit, the next time you go to assemble it, you'll have the correct side out. Mine forever will be inside out. You know what? It's, that's just aesthetics. It doesn't mean anything to me, and it does nothing to affect the performance of the stove. So I just want to put that out there. I was a little bit leery of it. I thought I was right in my concerns. Turns out it wasn't a big deal at all. All right, now let's put this stove together. So people all have different uh, styles for putting these stoves together. But having owned the uh, Emberlitz and the Luxatas and the Uberliebens, and they all have the basic style, I, I, I've gravitated to one method for doing this. And that is I start with the three solid panels, the three of the one, obviously not the one with the feed port, and I assemble those first. Now, here's something, and I'm going to say this is a bit of a, a miss on Fire Maple's part. Boy, would it ever be easy for them to correct, and I'm going to correct it for myself. Two panels have slots. Can you see them right up here, those two slots? Those are for the crossbars. This panel does not, so this is the back of the stove, because obviously... The front panel does not have them. How easy would it have been for Fire Maple to cut slots in all four panels? Because now what I have to do is I have to be conscious of putting it together so the panels with the slots are the sides, even though they're identical in every other way to the back. All right, so let's go back and work on this. And when I said I, I can do this, I'm going to actually do exactly that. I'm going to use my Dremel tool to put slots in the exact same positions on the other two panels. So if I'm not paying attention and I get it all assembled I, and realize I didn't do it correctly, I don't have to worry about it and it'll still work. All right, so let's put these together. Easy enough to put together. See, and I almost did put that on wrong. Put. All right, side slots. Here's what I want. Back, and this is exactly what I'm saying. So I have a back and one side, second side attached. I'm trying to make sure you can see this. I'll have to pull back from the camera. You can either put the last side on now and hold it open like a book, or you can wait and put it on. I tend to use it like that, just opened up completely. Now, take your panel or your fire grate, and you'll notice that there are tabs on three sides of the fire grate. So the one without faces towards the open side or the feed port. So let's do that now. This requires a little bit of juggling. This is the type of stove that my friend Mac from Simple Theory Gear would call a puzzle stove. 
and he's he's right. You know, and now I I don't have uh, problems in cold weather. Actually, it's not very warm up today. It's right around freezing. You can see I've got bare hands. Extreme cold weather, yeah, you might struggle struggle with this a little bit, but I used it all winter without any issues, so maybe I just got used to it. So I'm going to put it in the bottom slot, kind of roll it up over, making sure that you've got some tension on all the sides at the same time. There we go. So it's three of the sides, and then the last side. The nice thing about this titanium, it's flexible enough that you just have to give it a little bit of a flex and engage the last of the notches. That's it. Stove is assembled, with the exception of the crossbars, which I'll put on top of this when we go to have a fire in it. So that's the assembly of the stove. Now, I'm going to give you all of the specs in the, in the video description so that you can reference it there. But uh, let's just talk about this. All of these panels, crossbars, and the case that it came in, 7.7 .7 ounces. I think it's 218 grams. That's light. I mean, it is very light. But here, I just want to show you this as well. Can you see what I mean about loose fitting? That loose fitting is actually a benefit. I didn't realize that at first, but it is an actually a necessary thing if you want to move that fire pad, the fire grate up to the next slot holes. You do need to have that little bit of looseness in the tolerances, and it's still quite good. As you can see, the, the panels or the tabs stick out a long ways here. They're actually quite oversized for that reason, so that you can still use it down below and up above. Now, you can probably see what I mean about the warping. I have the warping all turned in, and that has made a huge difference in keeping the stove assembled. All right, a few comments on the design before we start to get a fire going in it. To start with, one of the things I look for on stoves of any design, but especially one of this design, is how much airflow I have at the top and at the bottom. Well, let's just start with the top. This is good ventilation. Would have been nice had it been carried around to the back as well. So, I, yeah, and I know, you're right, that could, have, that could have shown me exactly which of the panels were which. But I would like, at Fire Maple, if you're listening, and they do, uh, that you continue these holes all the way around all three sides. Ventilation is just as important at the top as it is at the bottom. The crenellations, these little dips here, they're not all that big. So you do need to have those hole there on the bottom. There is a fair amount of open space all around the outside. I actually anticipated that I, the holes, well, they are too big for pellets, so that's, that's off the table. That won't, without modification, a screen or something else, wood pellets are not going to work well in here. But I was wondering if that solid area in the center was going to affect draft. And uh, over my experience, no, it doesn't. It actually, the stove burns well. It doesn't burn overly aggressive, but it's not so slow that you can't get a fire going and get a good hot fire in it quickly. My only comment I'm going to say about this that I would like us to see a bit of a change is this feed port. It is huge. It is just, um, you know, huge. And it can affect airflow negatively because you can actually get too much air in through here or too much heat loss either way you want to do it. If you look at an emberlet, and I recommend you do just for comparison, the hole in the emberlet is tiny. The hole and most of the other stoves of this style is smaller than this. Some are quite large, but they're all smaller than this. I think the stove would be improved by having a hole that is not quite this large. Now, that does mean you can get a lot of wood in, long pieces of wood in through here, which I'll do a little bit of. For the most part, I, I don't put that many large sticks in all at the same time. The other thing I've noticed is, because of the size, some of the coals and embers will fall out as the fire burns on. So that's something I think, well, let's just get to demonstrating it now. All right, I've uh, collected up everything I need for a fire. So I just uh, want to point this out as well. Because it has an open fire grate on the bottom and no ash pan, I've elected to, this uh, little setup I carry with me quite often, it's a piece of aluminum flash and I'll use for an ash pan. And underneath is a fiberglass mat. Something I picked up off of, I think it was Amazon, could have been AliExpress. They're very common. Just look for fiberglass mats. This is about 12 inches by 12 inches and it's great for putting under any stove. I mean, the ground is nice and wet here. It's just a good practice to get into just the same when you're working with wood stoves outdoors. All right, so this is some oh, oh terrible birch bark, but it's birch bark nonetheless, meaning it will light up. In fact, I'll use that little piece sticking out as the way to light this. Oh. I often say that birch bark off the ground is just as good as birch bark that you can 
pull off of a tree and it will burn just as well. It's just maybe not as easily to uh, manipulate sometimes. All right, so birch bark, spruce twigs. I might as well put those in now. It's going to make for a bit of a smoky fire when it first gets going, but it'll level out after a bit. I did say it would still light, and it still lights. Give that a second or two before I start doing anything else with the fire here. There is a bit of a breeze, as you can see. Uh, what I have is I do have a windscreen. I often take that as well. If I find it's going to be a bit too windy. So what else I have picked up here is just literally twigs off the st off of the ground. Now, I could have split out wood and got some really dry stuff, but the whole point of a twig stove is that you use twigs, right? So that's what I've got is twigs. Venturing up in size to something a little bit larger and then larger again. So. I do have my gloves right next to me if I need them. Spruce twigs are kind of double-edged. They light up like nobody's business. They create intense, intense hot flame fast, uh, but they can throw sparks too. So just be cautious of that if you're using spruce twigs, pine twigs for that matter, fir twigs. I think the twigs I'm throwing in now is off of a maple. Chance to catch a little more. Good draft, right? Ooh, I just realized what I didn't do. Am I going to get these on or not? That is these um, crossbars. That's the thing about crossbars. If you don't get them on, you may not. This is definitely going to take gloves. Maybe I'll let the fire die down a little bit in intensity as, as I do. If I can get one of them on, it's all I'm going to need for the pot I have. But I'd just as soon get both of them on. Let's see if I can manage this without burning myself. All right, I got that one on anyway. Without burning myself. Good. Let's see if I can do the second one without burning myself. Maybe not. As the flames shift because of the wind, yeah, I'm not going to get that second one on. Don't need it anyway to for the demonstration purposes. Get more wood in. And I think we can size up a little bit. Now, here's where the feed port comes in. I should be able to start feeding sticks in through the feed port. It's not ready for it. So what I think I'll do is I'll just give it another second or two for it to really engage, really get going, and then I'll put the pot on to see what kind of an effect having a pot on top of a this stove does. Yeah, I, I really do think you can see how much flame is coming out of the feed port. It, it doesn't need to be that big. In fact, it's I think it works against the stove too a little bit. I mean, it does draw air in, a little bit of backdraft. Things, the air comes out, the flame comes out with it, and things fall out. How much, you know, you can't get that much wood in there like that. It doesn't need to be that big. All right, that's pretty, pretty clean burning. Let's see what putting a pot on does. Okay, admittedly, it's not a big pot. It's only a 900 milliliter. This is my Fire Maple 900 mil milliliter Alti Titanium Pot. I've reviewed this separately. But uh, it's a nice combination, titanium stove, titanium pot, very lightweight, very compact, does everything I need it to do out here. And, uh, you know, okay, there is tar and stuff on the bottom of the pot from previous uses. That's also smoking. But for the most part, you know, this is fine. I've done this with as large as a 16 centimeter pot. And uh, as long as the fire is burning hot, I don't get smoke. If fire is not burning hot, then I do get smoke. But as I've mentioned already, Yeah, okay. As I mentioned already, the you know that open feed port is making a little challenge in here. I've had some really hot fires in this stove, as you can well imagine. And uh, 
it's working. It's working fine with those few the small things I mentioned about it. All right, you know what? I, that's more than enough wood in there to boil that water for my coffee. When it's all said and done, I'll wrap this video up. So that is definitely one of the things about uh, titanium stoves like this, these ultralight ones, is that once the fire has died out, it, they cool down so very quickly. So if you are in a bit of a rush to get on a trail quickly, uh, once your coals are out, uh, or if you want to dump them in the same spot, uh, safe spot, and then pour some water over them to put them out, your stove's going to be cold within seconds, especially while it's cold outside like it is today. Uh, I'm going to show you the stove. I just want to give you some images of the stove and just show you how it hasn't warped. Maybe that's the best way to say it. There is the original warping from when I first had that first initial burn. I call it the set-in burn. You know, I, sh I should have realized that because that happens with all stoves, stainless steel or whatever. If it's a pieced together stove, then it does take a set after the heat is applied to it first burn so that's that's very common so don't be surprised by that it's just a matter of you don't want the warping to be so much that you can't assemble the stove and you can't use the stove safely a little bit of warping is not indicative of any issues with it at all it's just the nature of steel especially flat steel it wants to do a little bit of warping and this has warped yes but again it's actually warped in my opinion for the better because now it's curved inwards and it actually makes for a bit of a snugger, snugger fit overall. Now, there is something I did not show you. I did explain it and that's where it's going to stay is with just explaining it. So those second slots on here, that's for the fire grate to be lifted up into a position where you can use an alcohol stove or you can use uh, solid fuel. I'm not a fan of solid fuel. I've made that clear in many videos. Uh, I, I would try it with this stove. To be honest, it, like I said, I'm just not a fan of using it for any variety of reasons. Alcohol stoves, though, I use quite a bit. Where's the one I used today? I actually did this when I first got out and made tea with it. This is my Gosshawk Swirling Flame Stove. Uh, great little stove. You can expect a review on this at some point. I chose this because it is so light compared to Trangias, which are made of brass. Not that Trangias are heavy. But I wanted to share this with you. This stand both the same diameter and the same height as the Trangia, although it's a little bit different in shape. When I put the plate, raise the plate up here and put the alcohol stove on, I get a pot gap of just about one and a half inches. And that, that's just the outside limit of where you really want to have your pot gap. A little bit one and a quarter inches is, is more ideal. So the easiest thing I could have done with the stove and you can do with a Trangia is lay the cap on the fire grate in that raised position, then put your, your alcohol stove on it and you'll get it closer to the crossbars and closer to a more efficient uh, height, if we will, pot gap. I mean, it'll still work. It's just that it's not as efficient with the fuel. So that's just, you know, for people who have experience using alcohol stoves, you'll know that you can vary the height and you'll still work. It's just it'll change the speed at which you get a boil and how much alcohol you'll go through getting a boil in your water. Yeah, uh, I mean, it works great. And it's nice to have that option. Like I said, when I first got here, rather than go around collecting wood, I just made myself a cup of tea by using the alcohol stove. So that worked out well like that. Nice to have that option. Uh, downsides. Only, as I mentioned, the fact that uh, the warping, I don't see that as a downside. The opening being a little bit overly large, uh, that's a bit of a downside. And the fact that you really, without modification, you can't use wood pellets in this with that wide open holes in the bottom. The fact that there's no ash pan, you can see that as a downside, but lots of stoves don't come with ash pans. You're saving weight that way, but you do got to be sure of what you're putting this on because if you're on the wrong surface, hot coals will, will draw through, just heat will transfer through the bottom of the stove into that surface. So just make sure you're on something that is safe, whether it's rock, mineral earth, or like I do, carry the little fiberglass mat with me and that does the trick for me. Holes on the side, lots of uh, ventilation here. I think they could have just carried them right around the back and it would have made uh, a good call and just get that much more ventilation and bring the hole in on the front a little bit. So, and after that, you know, it's, it's, it's a little loose sounding. Like I said, those tolerances are loose for uh, a reason. So I, I don't consider that a con at all. Okay, that's everything I have for you. I don't think I mentioned the size of this, but the 
firebox itself measures at the top at four and a quarter inches square and then four no four and a half inches square and four and three quarters inches deep that's approaching the firebox stove volume inside so you can get a lot of wood in this quite big stove for its design everything else specs weights all that type of stuff links all in the video description if you have any comments or questions put those in the comments section below but until next time get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference bye for now